In part b, we generally need Maxwell's equations to solve for the electric and magnetic fields when we have wave propagation. But if we already know the electric field and we also have a plane wave, we can use the simplified expression, which is h vector phasor is 1 over eta, characteristic impedance. It could be complex. And gamma hat, the propagation direction, crossed with e vector phasor. So we can use that here. We can say the incident wave and um, yep okay so this will be a function of x and t just like for the electric field and if we do gamma hat cross with e so gamma hat is the direction of propagation, so that's x hat. And this was in the y hat direction. So if we do x uh, crossed with y, we're going to get z hat direction. So the h field is pointing in the z hat direction. Then for the magnitude, we take the magnitude of the e field and divide by eta. So we need to solve for eta 1. Now we had a lossless material, so we can use what's in that column for it uh, in table 7-1 and we can use eta naught over square root of epsilon r1 so eta naught is just square um, the eta characteristic impedance for free space and we, if we just adjust it by the relative permittivity of the material that we have we can plug in our numbers and get 251.33 ohms so now, if we take 8 and divide by that number, 251.33, we'll get the amplitude of our magnetic field. Then for the rest of it, um, nothing needs to change. All we're doing here is we're adjusting the direction and the amplitude. So everything else from the electric field stands. So we have cosine omega t, which we found was 6 pi times 10 to the 9th t, and minus 30 pi propagating in the x direction. All right, and that would be amps per meter for the units. So we should probably simplify this in our final expression. That would be 31.83 and we could then we would then have to put it in terms of milliamps per meter